uh, I realize we're here to probably to talk about the draft, but I just wanted to revisit yesterday's expansion draft and uh, Mason Appleton being taken by Seattle and uh, also holding on to Dylan DeMello and the, and the plan that you had going into that and how it worked out. If you could just speak to that. Sure. A bit. Well, first and foremost, like uh, tremendous thanks to, uh, to Mason Appleton for the, um, you know, the work that he put into our organization and the contributions that he made. It was very, it was a tough call to make, um, you know, to both Mason and, uh, and Dylan to tell them that, you know, we had left them unprotected. Um, it was a tough call to, uh, to, to make to, to Mason, um, to, you know, tell him obviously that he was a selection. It was, uh, uh, a pretty joyous call to make to, um, you know, to Dylan DeMello to say that, uh, you know, he was still part of the Jets. So lots of emotion there, but it's a bittersweet thing. You know, it's a, on the, on the eve of the eve of the draft, um, you know, we, we end up losing a player that, uh, you know, that was drafted, uh, that went through our development process that, uh, you know, became a you know, key contributor in the American League and then a, a, a solid key contributor in the, uh, in the National Hockey League. And it just kind of underscores what the, the process of this weekend, you know, really is all about. And, and um, um, you know, proud of how Mason, you know, has come through the, uh, the organization and, uh, uh, you know, wish, uh, wish him all the best. It, it creates a hole in our lineup for sure that, um, you know, we're, we're obviously exploring right now the different ways to, um, you know, to, to patch that up. We'll go next to Kelly Moore from 680 CJOB. Go ahead, Kelly. Uh, thanks very much, Gregor. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Kevin. Yeah, just in terms of patching that up, uh, does that happen internally? Uh, does that maybe happen uh, with what might take place on the draft? Well, not the draft or flight, but draft, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to, you know, we obviously. Um, have been planning, uh, you know, that something might happen for, for a while now. So we've been uh, in our scouting meetings, we've been identifying, you know, who could be out there in free agency, who might be out there uh, in trade uh, if this scenario happened or if, you know, other scenarios happen. So um, it, it's, it's still a work in progress. We're, uh, you know, I guess a, a week, just under a week away from, uh, from free agency. So uh, lots can happen between now and then. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to spend, you know, the time exploring, you know, all those different options. There, there could be some internal options of, uh, uh, you know, maybe a vessel line and moving to the right side or something like that. But um, those things, uh, you know, you have to have some conversations with the coaches and, and see, you know, where, where they feel, uh, you know, that is at as well. We'll go next to Mike McIntyre from the Winnipeg Free Press. Go ahead, Mike. Thanks, Gregor. Uh, hi, Kevin. Hi. Um, you mentioned difficult calls to, to Dylan and Mason, obviously, to tell them about not being protected. Can you just take us through the process of, I guess, deciding on your protected list? And I guess the big one uh, that certainly made a lot of noise was lo protecting Logan Stanley and leaving Dylan exposed. So what you find out through this process is, um, you know, who, who you, um, and everybody does their own, you know, kind of internal uh, protection list of, of all the different teams. So we spend uh, a tremendous amount of time in the pro scouting meetings, uh, you know, putting what we think is going to be the protection list of the other teams. And then you, you know, you, so you can go and make some calls to them to see um, if there's a guy that you like, that you think is going to be on the outside, uh, you know, if, if they would, um, you know, be uh, interested in a trade. Um, so we, you know, obviously that process is, is not unique to us. The other teams do the same thing and, and they came down to, you know, basically uh, the same conclusions that, um, that I think everyone was coming down to. So we had a, a lot of calls on, on Logan to see if, um, you know, we'd be interested in trading him as opposed to potentially losing him. And, um, you know, so we, we went through that process and, and it became very apparent that um, even if Seattle wasn't the ultimate destination, there was a lot of, um, you know, places that, that might have reached out to Seattle to, to, to go in that regard. So it doesn't make it any easier to have to make that decision to put your list in. Um, but, um, you know, there's always going to be risks. We knew going in that we were going to lose a very good player. And, um, you know, it, uh, it was, you're on pins and needles there a little bit as after you, after you hit send, but, um, you know, you, you, you let the process play itself out. We'll go next to Sean Reynolds from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Sean. Hey, Kevin, uh, just to switch gears here a little bit. Um, what can you tell us about when you first learned of uh, the assault allegations uh, against Brad Aldrich uh, during your time in Chicago? 
So, I, you know, obviously, I think, uh, uh, you know, issued a statement here just moments before the um, uh, the press conference here and, and you know we'll stand by that statement it's it's a uh, it, these are very serious allegations and and it, you never take them lightly um, and uh, obviously it's a matter that uh, that's in front of the courts and uh, that's you know really I guess essentially uh, you know that's why I put the statement out there and, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there and, and again if the um, investigators if, if there's an opportunity for for me to to meet with them um, I definitely will we'll go next to Greg Wyshynski from ESPN go ahead Greg Thanks a lot. Hey, uh, Kevin, I had a question actually about the uh, <clears throat> schedule for next year. Uh, I, I saw that they are not doing the two home games together homestand thing uh, like they did this year. Yeah. I was wondering your feelings on that. It, it, I feel like that'd be a good thing for a, a team that does a little bit of traveling to have a couple of days in the same spot. Yeah, so it was something that we talked about, and and I think um, I, I don't know if it's because of of, of the the uniqueness of of having the Olympic uh, uh, potential Olympic break in there, if they 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 couldn't uh, you know uh, make that work, or if there were other reasons. But I know from a hockey standpoint, I think the coaches liked it. I think the players, um, you know, had some time for it. Um, obviously, it does you know get old in some respects, where you know when you have to do a whole entire season of it. So I, I know that there was a, maybe a small appetite. Um, you know, to, to have, uh, you know, a little bit more of a, of a trial in that, that, that situation, but schedule makers, I think we're under a, a real tough, um, tough type of situation here. And, and now it was a lot easier, I think. And again, I'm, I'm, I may be putting words in their mouths. I think it was a lot easier when, you know, we were in a COVID situation and really there, there was no building issues at that point in time. I think you've got, you know, teams that have multiple tenants, uh, you've got concerts, uh, you know, again, all the, the wonderful things that, that we've missed, uh, you know, over this period of time, I, I do think that probably came into play when they tried to put it in, uh, in practical use. We'll go next to Ken Weave from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Weaver. Thanks, Gregor. Afternoon, Kevin. Uh, shifting gears to the draft, uh, how would you describe the you know depth of player available in your range, and what were some of the biggest challenges uh, with the limited live viewings for your scouting staff this year, and how did you tackle those? So it uh, certainly was a challenge. We had some scouts that were more fortunate than others that uh, you know were able to have some live views. Uh, certainly, the the, the players in Europe uh, had uh, there was more opportunity to uh, to see them for. Uh, uh, for the scouts and, and in the U.S. as well. I think it was, it was great that the, you know, there was a, an opportunity at the end of the year in Dallas to, uh, for a, a U18 tournament that, um, you know, is, is, a, is a, uh, always a big scouting tournament when it comes to it and the participation of, of a lot of the Canadian players that maybe um, didn't get a chance to, uh, you know, to, to play in the CHL, at least gave them an opportunity to uh, showcase themselves there. Um, but man, oh man, lots of video, lots and lots of video. Um, you know, we became pretty efficient in that video. Um, you know, we've got uh, a good staff that uh, spends a lot of time, uh, you know, uh, you know, cutting the video and, and doing the different things. Uh, Barrett Laganchek, our, our scouting coordinator, you know, just did a, an awesome job of, of, uh, of feeding all of us in the organization with, uh, with manageable video, you know, so being able to, um, you know, uh, get multiple views uh, of certain players, uh, um, in in kind of uh, more uh, expeditious time, so a better use of your time, so to speak. So you you have to really find a way to be uh, you know efficient, and uh, you know to get the views. And and I think as it went on, you know, you, you your eye kind of you know became more trained on, on how to uh, you know to, to to watch the video for the things that you need. There's going to be some good players. You know, there's it's going to be an interesting uh, process. We've um, is it going to be as tight to your list, you know, as in the past? I don't know. You know, I, I think there's um, uh, you know some some good players in in our range there that um, we'd be real excited to to have. We've um, you know, some of the players that we've picked in the past in this range have, have gone on to be, you know, very good players uh, for our organization right now. So, um, you know, it'll be, uh, it's still in the refining final stages, you know, and we're still, uh, you know, working that through. We'll go next to Sarah Lesky from TSN. Go ahead, Sarah. Hi, Kevin. Just wondering uh, when looking ahead to whether it be free agency or via trade, when you look at your blue line, uh, is how many defensemen are you looking to hopefully target or, or add through that process? It'll be a function of a couple of things. I think, um, you know, one, you know, there, there has to be an opportunity um, in front of us that, that, uh, that makes sense. Um, you know, we can, you know, there's, there's lots of names out there that uh, people say um, would be, be great fits, but the fit has to be the right uh, thing for both sides. 
Um, and uh, again, it'll be a function of cap as well. There's only so much, uh, you know, so many dollars that we can, you know, shift around or, or do different things uh, with that respect. So, and you know, we have to give, you know, some, uh, um, some value to the young players that we have in the organization and put them up beside um, what a potential free agent, uh, you know, might look like and, and see, you know, where things are going to be at, you know, 20, 30, 40 games down the road, um, you know, would you be better uh, in a better position with, uh, you know, those players having played, you know, that amount of games and, and, and that amount of experience. So a lot of it goes in, um, we're still a long way from free agency. So, you know, who's going to be left on the board when, um, when the clock starts, so to speak, will be, I guess, interesting to see. Go next to Carter Brooks from Game On. Go ahead, Carter. Hi, Kevin. I know you mentioned already a little bit about Mason Appleton and the decision you made there. Yeah. But how difficult was it to kind of go with this? We've seen the Jets go through the draft and develop model for so many years and someone that it, that has gone through so well with Mason Appleton through the moose, putting together yeah. his campaigns in the AHL, then coming to the NHL and starting to flourish. How tough was it to make that call? Oh, it was real tough. Um, you know, again, and, and we had a, a meeting this morning with our amateur scouts and I led off the meeting, you know, with, with that very comment that, you know, again, um, the, you know, the, the, because of the scouting that they did and, and the pick that we made that, you know, obviously uh, we had an NHL player, but we all knew when Seattle was coming in that uh, there was going to, you know, be an opportunity to, to lose uh, a, a piece of your team. Um, you know, we, we discussed with, uh, um, with Seattle about what it would take to potentially not lose a piece off our team. But, um, there was, you know, there was nothing that, uh, that, that, uh, would work for me, um, you know, to make a deal that, uh, was going to satisfy that. So, um, you know, like I say, when you get ready to hit send on, on your protection list, you, you take a, a deep breath and, and, uh, there was lots of conversation and dialogue and, and, um, you know, it, it, it became what it became. And, uh, when I got the call from, from Ron Francis yesterday morning that, um, you know, he had made that claim, um, you know, it, it, I think the only, the only sigh of relief is that now we can move forward and, uh, you know, you, at least, you know, uh, which path you're going down and, and, um, and Mason's going to be a good player there. I think he's going to, you know, I think with an increased role there, he's going to flourish and, and, uh, good for him. And, uh, you know, we wish him all the best. Go back to Kelly Moore from 680 CGOB. Go ahead, Kelly. Kevin, you mentioned the, the fact that uh, the list could really be changing on Friday night. How deep do you think the draft goes before the uncertainty starts to happen? Is it the first five, first eight? Where do you see the muddling start to begin? Yeah, I think there's a, there's several different tiers. I think, you know, certainly you have the high end tier. Um, where, you know, uh, um, again, the, the players that are going uh, real high there are going to be real special uh, and probably earlier, sooner rather than, uh, you know, rather than later. And I think there's maybe a, a little bit of a middle tier. And then I think there's a, a pretty solid, um, you know, kind of tier just below that middle tier that's, uh, that's right there. So I think that's where we're in, um, you know, with our pick. And then I think, you know, slightly after, slightly after our pick, I think there's a, a little bit of a drop off. We'll go back to Mike McIntyre from the Free Press. Go ahead, Mike. Thanks again, Gregor. Kevin, just sort of a two-parter here on the state of your own players or guys that were on your roster this past year. Um, yeah. I realize you probably can't give us too much by way of details, but can you give us a general sense of negotiations with your two RFAs in, in Neil and Andrew? And um, with regards to your UFAs, I know you re-signed Dominic. Um, can you give us a sense, I guess, of, of is the door open on any of those guys and any specifics uh, before next Wednesday? So on the two UFAs, uh, you know, we, we've had, you know, kind of uh, preliminary conversations with uh, with both of, of their camps. So they're they're obviously in in different situations where, you know, you, you, you own them, you qualify them, they, you go through a certain you know process, I think. Um, from a UFA standpoint, we've we've had uh, you know conversations. I think with all the uh, the UFA's agents, um, and you know I would say it's best described as a, a lot of balls in the air type thing. And um, you know every decision affects another decision affects another decision, whether it, you know comes to position or cap um, or free agency or trade. Um, you know so it's uh, it, it's you know one of those things where you have to kind of uh, be methodical i guess in in the process go next to ted wyman from the sun go ahead ted 
Kevin, you, you keep DeMello around, but you've got uh, a lot more left shot defensemen under contract right now than you do right shot defensemen. No. Is there a priority on trying to, to add at that particular position, right shot defensemen um, through free agency or trades? Well, I think, uh, you know, I think it stares at you first. I think when you look at the screen, that's, that's what you see first. Uh, when I look up on my board, um, you know, we've, our, our youth is, uh, is on the left side. Um, you know, it's uh, sometimes you've got guys that, that maybe can play the right side, but uh, in the process of, of trying to add, I think you, you first keep an open mind and see what, you know, what might be there, whether it's right side or left side uh, through trade or, uh, or um, potential free agency. Uh, and then you hone in on it. You see where, you know, the, is this a better opportunity for the money and, and vice versa. So it, it, it comes into play, but I think, you know, again, when you're, it's not a perfect world here. There's not always that perfect, you know, right-hand shot, um, you know, fit that's, you know, six foot four, 260 pounds that can shoot the puck like crazy. And, uh, you know, used to ragdoll two players all the time. Go back to Sean Reynolds from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Sean. <laughs> Sorry, that was a really good answer. Um, <laughs> um, uh, is, did you find, Kevin, there's a sense of urgency based on where, you know, players like, like Blake and Mark and Connor Hellebuck are? It, with, you've got them under control for another three years. I know yeah. you've got some great prospects coming up that, you know, are probably going to fill things in and be really great NHL players, but is there a sense of urgency maybe in taking care of the window that you, your team has in front of you right now and trying to solve some of these problems that you have on the back end right now? Well, we've been, we've been in that mode really since, um, you know, since the, the day that uh, we actually were able to kind of re-sign Blake Wheeler. It was one of those things where, you know, if he had gone off into free agency, I think the, you know, the path of, of, of the organization probably goes in a different direction. We've had a lot of ups and downs and bumps and, um, you know, kind of uh, unforeseen things happen to us along the way, you know, be it, you know, Brian Little, be it, uh, um, you know, Buff, uh, you know, those type of situations that we've had to, you know, kind of pivot on the fly. Um, and we've been able to make the postseason, you know, while still doing that. So um, that urgency has been there, you know, right from, like I say, that moment on. And, and it continues uh, moving forward here. And, and we're fortunate that we have a good group. What's happened along the way is, you know, players like Kyle Connor and Nikolai Ehlers have, have really come into their own. You know, obviously we made that decision several years ago to, um, you know, to give Connor Hellebuck the reins and, 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 you know, let him cut his teeth in the National Hockey League. And that decision is, you know, has, has, has helped us to, to get to that point where we're at here now with the Vesna winning goaltender. Um, so yeah, we're, 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 we're hopeful that we can find ways to address, um, you know, the, 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 the opportunities, um, again, have to be there and, and, uh, we're hopeful that, uh, you know, we can find our way. Go back to Carter Brooks from game on. Go ahead, Carter. Hi again, Kevin, you just mentioned, uh, Brian Little, um, how difficult has it been the past couple of summers or past couple of off seasons now? kind of not entirely knowing what the situation is there or unless maybe something new has come to light, had there any developments on the Brian Little front? No. So Brian, Brian's essentially in our, in our estimation here is, 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 you know, uh, we're treating it and he's treating it like he, he, he's not playing unless a doctor comes and says, you know what, you're cleared. And there's no doctors right now that, that are going to do that. So from, from that standpoint, um, you know, although, you know, he's not retired, like he's, um, you know, he's a player that's, that's, you know, not available to us. I'll go back to Ken Weave from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Weaver. Kevin, uh, what was your reaction to the news earlier today that the AHL might be an option for Cole Perfetti? I know there's still a little bit of the hypothetical, but would you be supportive of a rule change of that manner that in terms of how that might affect Cole and some of the other players that had AHL experience this year? See, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm obviously a big supporter of, of uh, you know, junior hockey and, and uh, making sure your kids develop, um, you know, properly. And, you um, you know, so again, the CHL rule has, has um, uh, been a, a rule that has, uh, you know, afforded that, that opportunity to those young kids to develop based on, you know, if you're not 18 or 19 and in the National Hockey League, you have to go back. I think we're in a real unique situation here, you know, this past season um, with Cole especially, and I guess I can't speak for, for any other, you know, teams, but um, if in fact that does become um, a, a rule, you know, whether it's for this year or moving forward, um, I think you have to be careful how you use it, but a player like Cole 
you know, shown, um, you know, tremendous improvement uh, going to the world championships and, and playing with men uh, and, 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 and having that opportunity, I think, you know, help further his development. And if there's that opportunity next year, I think, you know, ha having him available to the American League um, is just a great option to have, especially for him. Um, that's not to say that, you know, he, he doesn't come to camp and, and um, you know, earn a job because that opportunity could be there for him uh, as well for, uh, for an exciting young guy like that. So um, any option that we have with, you know, his development, like the American Hockey League is, is, is a welcome thing. Just a few more for Kevin. We'll go back to Mike McIntyre from the Free Press. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, Kevin, I know it's going to be unveiled, I think, at five o'clock our time today, but just give us your thoughts on uh, on your team schedule for next season, which obviously is going to look a lot different than the one you just completed. Yeah, it, it's interesting. You know, it's uh, um, there's a uh, obviously if the, the, the Olympics is still a reality, they're, they're, they're at least you're moving forward in, in that regard right now, putting uh, some emphasis uh, on that in the schedule. It'll, it's a period of time where um, you um, uh, you have a big break, you know. So going back to when we had the Olympics before, you know, it, it was a, an interesting time for for everybody not to have uh, you know games uh, in in uh, in your marketplace for an extended period of time. The good thing, I guess, for us is um, you know we'll have moose hockey uh, playing during that time and and a, and a great opportunity for um, you know for for some uh, some people to to keep their hockey fix, so to speak, going. Um, while the, uh, while, while the potential Olympics would be going on, it's, um, you know, it compresses things in a certain manner when you have those kind of, uh, uh things, but we, we've just gone through a, comp you know, really compressed schedule. And, and I think that, uh, um, it, it does get you back a little bit more to the traditional time where you can have off days and, and, uh, and the like. So, um, there's, of course it's not perfect. There's always things that you would have liked to change and, um, but the NHL, you know, does their very best to try to, to listen to, um, you know, to everybody's uh, uh, problems, so to speak. Go back to Sean Reynolds from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Sean. Hey, Kevin, you were talking about your assessment of the draft and the upper tier. And then, you know, you guys, there's a drop off in that kind of secondary tier right behind you. Um, do you foresee the way that uh, those tiers are setting up or maybe the way scouting was challenging this year? Is this being a kind of year where there's maybe more opportunity in, in than past years and maybe moving those picks or making kind of, you know, g more, more active GMing uh, than we would typically see. Yeah. I, I guess I'm not sure yet, you know, haven't, um, haven't really had a round of those calls yet for, um, for, for teams looking to, you know, to move up. Um, you know, there, there might be some situations where, you know, again, for us, if, uh, um, if we don't, you know, if, if we've lost the players off the board that we, we covet, we might move back. Um, you know, it, it just depends on, uh, I guess, how it all unfolds in front of you. And final question to Kelly Moore from CGOB. Go ahead, Kelly. Hey, Kevin, uh, if you were to take a look at either trading or signing an unrestricted free agent to address a need, uh, keeping in mind, you said previously that there have been times in the past where you've earmarked people, but they just don't see you uh, or your organization as a viability. So would a trade be more of a likelihood if there was a need that you wanted to address? Um, I think, you know, you're, you're open to everything. Um, you know, I, I, again, uh, right now we're active in, in both fronts. You know, we're active on, you know, whether it's uh, talking about trading players for picks, talking about maybe trading players for players. Um, and then, you know, but you know, you, you don't have the, you don't have the shotgun start yet of, uh, of free agency yet. So that's the, the thing that kind of happens, you know, like the timing side of things, you know, and you're always, you know, kind of weighing and wondering, so you, you don't know, like there, there are, you know, we've addressed some needs, um, albeit maybe short term, you know, through free agency last year. And, and maybe, you know, maybe there's that opportunity again this year. So you, you kind of evaluate everything as it comes at you and as the different um different you know events you know unfold and obviously you know the draft right now everybody's talking you know whether you're going to move a pick for something so because that's that's the way it is you know the the, uh, the the value of picks right now are at their highest and, and uh because everyone's getting set and ready to pick so um you know once these two days next two days go by then you know you're, you're focused more on the either player for player or, or free agency aspect of things 